Okay, so let's have a little look um, at just a couple of examples of questions on a paper two uh, style exam for marine science. Now, this is uh, specifically where the, the sort of questions you are asked are designed to um, basically test your knowledge on like practical skills. Um, this doesn't mean that you are watched doing practical skills. It's not like a lab assessment, but the questions are themed on practical skills. Okay, so let's have a look at these. First of all, little tip for you um, is to take a couple of seconds before you do anything else, just to look at the command word. This is a command word and also the number of marks, okay? Um, Sounds really obvious. It's actually going to help you so much because it's going to help you understand how to answer it um, and what exactly they're looking for and how long to actually spend um, on that question as well. So the command word is that word at the very start of the question. It will be like state, explain, describe, suggest, and um, what calculate. Um, so like here in this question, the command word is explain. In this question, it is stay. Um, and I'm going to go over the command words in a little bit more detail um, in a second. Um, but basically, look at that command word. Think about what it's saying. Look at the marks. State, it's asking for something very simple, very brief. Um, there is no point in, you know, going into loads of detail for this. Obviously, for this one, it's more straightforward. It's just the word equation for photosynthesis. Um, so yeah, so this one, nice, easy mark, hopefully, if you have been revising this nicely. So uh, I would just pop it in like this. There we go. Okay, one mark for you. Right. So that one state, uh, it, it it really is just asking you for, to kind of briefly, you know, state something quite simple or define something quite simple. So it's one mark. Then you will see with explain sorts of questions here. Explain is the command word. Um, they are looking for you to say a lot more. So like here. You know, they don't want you to state the name of a process, um, you know, such as maybe algal bloom or eutrophication. They don't just want you to state something. They want you to actually explain to them how does this cause this, okay? And that is why it's four marks, okay? Okay, so how I would answer this question, um, obviously you can pause this video, have a little think how you'd answer it first if you'd like to. Um, okay, so I might say something like, um, algal blooms will occur, okay, because that's our first bit. So what is happening if we have increased growth of marine algae? Um, if we have algal blooms, uh, this can basically means that, um, meaning there might be uh, too much competition for lights, um, the algae, can't type today, the algae may not be able to photosynthesize, It's algae to die. Um, this again can cause a lot of issues because that then we will have um, this will cause decomposition. Um, the oxygen in the water will be depleted, reduced, or it will uh, be used up, um, and animals cannot respire without oxygen, remember aerobic respiration, leading to the death of green animals. 
Okie dokie. So something like this, and by the way, you absolutely don't have to have written it like like this, um, like word for word. Um, but like just to, to give you an idea of like how the marks might be calculated for this, you know, I would get a mark for just putting this concept algal blooms will happen will occur and um, will the algal blooms uh gets you one mark talking about there being competition for light there's another mark so there's two out of four um might not be able to photosynthesize properly because you know they, there's too many too much algae they're all fighting for resources that's another mark um you even get a mark for then saying this will lead to algae death um, so that's already four marks. So could have actually stopped there and saved a bit of my time. But um, you can see that um, all of those four things have got four marks. It's a four mark question, so I can't get more than four marks. Um, but just to show you that you don't necessarily have to have said all of this, I'd also get a mark for if I'd said composition, maybe in replace of one of the other things about the oxygen decreasing, uh, and about the restoration and the death of animals. So, you know, you don't have to have said all of those things, but you would say like a combination of those four things. Okay. Right. So the next one, um, it's a four mark question again. So, you know, you maybe want to be spending like four minutes or so on it. Um, let's look at the command word. It's describe. Um, this is a uh, quite a common one for describing experiments because or practical skills because that they want you to go through the steps and say this is what you do. I want you to imagine that you are trying to explain um, and describe the step by step method of whatever the uh, the practical experiment is to so someone who's never done it before and they don't know what you're talking about. And then um, you need to say step for step and break it down. This is where your practical knowledge comes in. This is where that is important. So definitely do not skip over those things in the uh, like the video demos or the slides of my course. Okay, so we've got a little uh, scenario here. The growth of marine algae can be estimated by measuring the change in maximum depth of light penetration in seawater. So they've given us a hint there. Hopefully you can remember from the studying um, what how we would measure this and the equipment we'd use. So it's asking us to describe how the maximum depth of light penetration in seawater can be measured. Okay. So we're looking at uh, water turbidity, like how far down can you still get light penetrating in the seawater and how you measure that. Okay. Have a little think. I'm hoping you can remember this, <laughs> um, but I will show you what sort of thing I would put. Okay. So first of all, the thing that you wanted to talk about um, is the Saki dis uh, it, uh, sort of experiment. I don't know if you remember this. Um, in the course videos, I talk about this in unit two, where we talk about seawater. Um, and basically, the first mark really is for either mentioning Seki disc, which is the piece of equipment that you need for this uh, experiment, or uh, a even a description of a Seki disc would also be accepted here. Um, but yeah, so I would say you would use... Use a Seki disc and lower it onto uh, on a rope, rather lower it on a rope into the water. Seawater being measured, light depth, light penetration until you. Can no longer see the disc. Right. Um, again, if you're looking at this and you're like, oh my goodness, what is she talking about? <laughs> Don't panic, but have a look at unit two and you might need to go over these experimental skills. Don't be tempted to skip them just because, you know, they're a, a practical thing. Um, I did even give a little example of a way you can do this at home. 
using like bottle cap lids and Coca-Cola uh, and it might be good for like remembering it. So you mentioned the second disc and the first step, remember it's described. So we are step by step going through what you do, but try to be concise as well. You don't need to waffle. You just need to make sure all the main steps are included or at least four of them for those four marks. Um, okay, so um, then you um, need to basically uh, record the uh, length of the rope. Uh, you need to slowly raise a second disc again. And remeasure um, the length of the rope. Okay, because if you think about that, you are basically sort of going to be able to figure out at what point can you start seeing it again? At what point does that visibility disappear? Because the light is not going, you know, further enough down. Um, another important thing is that um, with most of these, think about you're going to repeat this and you're going to do the, you're going to calculate the mean length. So I might do this three times in one area of seawater. Um, calculate, you know, the, uh, the the difference between the first measurement of the length of the rope and the second one, and then uh, calculate the mean or the average. Um, so again, you don't actually have to have said every single one of these things to get four marks, um, but you need a selection of four of these. So like, I get one mark for saying secudis. I also can get a mark for saying low on a rope until you don't see it anymore. Um, record the length of the rope, I get another one. Uh, Remeasure the length of the rope, you get another one. Calculate the mean, you get another one. Um, so yeah, so up to a max of four of those point, main points and you get your full marks. Um, okay, again, See what I mean about this 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 word here, describe. Describe normally means you really want to go through, obviously these are shorter ones, two marks, two marks, but you really want to go through saying the method, which is the step-by-step -step of how you do that experiment, investigation or practical, okay? Um, so like describe how to test food for the presence of protein. You know, you would talk about the, you'd mention the Biorex solution. That gets you one mark because that's the thing that you use to detect um, the presence of protein. And saying the lilac color that it would turn is your second mark. So uh, use Biorex. There you go. So basically, you know, the 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 sort of what that boils down to is I get one mark for saying birat solution, because that's the chemical that you use for this. And I get one mark for saying what color it turns if it's positive. It turns look uh, lilac or purple um, from blue. Again, this next one. Uh, you see, it's described. It's described again. Gives us a good clue that it's in. A, you know, it's about one of these experiments. This one is three marks, so you're looking at saying three different things. Uh, the reason why this is more marks is because first of all, they're looking at you to say Benedict's test. or Benedict's solution. That's one mark. Okay. Um, you also need to mention with Benedict's and uh, reducing sugars um, and glucose, you need to mention heating it in a water bath because it's an extra step that you don't have with the other, um, yeah, you don't have it with like the other food tests. You don't need to heat it in the water bath. You do with Benedict's, so that's your extra mark. Um
Okay, so now I've put brick red, okay. Um, but you actually can get the mark if you say like red, uh, orange, yellow, green, because um it turns any of those colours uh if it's positive, but like it's um quantitative so for example if it's bright red it's high in sh in these reducing sugars glucose if it was you know green or yellow it's lower but it does still have uh, the reducing sugars in them okay now let's have a look at one more um let's have a little look so uh shrimps contain a range of nutrients that are needed in the human diet table 3.1 shows the masses of some nutrients found in 113 grams of shrimp. Um, okay, so what have we got? So uh, we've got uh, carbs, proteins, fats, iron, and calcium. Um, date one major nutrient group that is not included. Um, so here, um, again, it's, it's, you know, it's state. So it's... Um, very brief one word answer here um so looking at this it's major nutrient groups okay so they're not looking for something like really narrowed down um it would be vitamins here the reason for that is because you've got carbohydrates that's a major group proteins major group fats or lipids major group and then iron and, and calcium are both minerals. So the missing one is vitamins. Um, give one function of protein. And again, it's just give one function, very simple, um, just a one marker. Um, there's a, a couple of variations you could say. You could say for growth or repair of cells or cell production. I would probably say the growth, growth and repair of cells, sorted, easy mark. Okay, let's see then what we've got. Okay, so we have a different um, type of uh, command word here because we've got calculate. Okay, so that's our command word. Okay, so an adult human requires approximately 63 grams of protein each day in their diet. Um, calculate the mass of shrimp that contains 63 grams of protein. Show your working and state the unit. Um, all right, so I hate maths. Full disclaimer for you. <laughs> and I don't want to give maths a bad name because don't hate maths. Don't be like me. I mean, it's okay if you do, but you don't need to hate maths. Um, but just a disclaimer, because I know quite a few people go, oh my goodness, I can't do biology. I can't do marine science because I don't like maths. You can't, you can do it. Okay. We can do this. So if you are that sort of person that's freaked out by maths, don't just freak out because you see numbers and calculate. Okay. First of all, I think even if you find maths hard, it's much easier when it is a applied to something you find interesting. Okay, like maybe you love marine science, but you don't really like maths. Apply it to marine science and it becomes easier. Uh, the other thing is, remember, you have a calculator. There's no reason to do this in your head. You will have a calculator in the exam. So um, absolutely use a calculator. Use a scientific calculator. Take it into your exam. Make sure if it says show your working, especially show your working. Okay. Um, because this is three marks. So it's not just for the calculation, it's for the collect, correct calculation, the correct unit, showing you're working as well. It's also handy to show you're working because sometimes you will get marks just for getting like the first step right, even if you get the final calculation wrong or you don't quite get there. Okay. So, so I'm going to think about what I'm doing. Calculate the mass of shrimp that contains 63 grams of protein. Um. And we're talking about the mass of, so the mass of protein in 113 grams of shrimp um, is 22 grams of protein, nice and high in protein. Um, okay, so the first thing then um, that we want to do is 
we want to figure out sort of how many grams of protein there are like in one shrimp and then we can work upwards from there so my first step would be uh 113 uh plus 22 Plus divided, goodness me, 113 divided by 22, and see what I get on my calculator. Okay, 5.13. So 5.13 grams, so 5.13 grams of shrimp contains one gram of protein nice to know good to know um okay and we want to know what mass of shrimp contains 63 grams of protein so let's take 5.13 because we know that's equal to one gram of protein if we have 5.13 grams of um shrimp that's one gram of protein so i'm going to do 5.13 times by because it says 63, so we're finding 63. Um, and then what is the answer? Let's pop that in my calculator. 323.6. So you can round that, um, and that would also be correct, or you can just put it in how it is, 323.6. Um, and of course, remember that it's grams. So the mass of shrimp is three, three, two, three point six, and the um, units that asked for the unit as well is in grams. That's important. Okay, so I'd keep my working there, and I'd put uh, three, two, three point six gram, and then down here that way, unit in here. I would put uh, grams. And that's your three marks. Um, so, yeah, so sometimes that's a little bit of trial and error, you know, if you come back here and, and look at that, um, because we've got mass of nutrient in 113 grams of shrimp. Um, so, yeah, so, so where I worked from there is I looked at what I know. So I have the 22 figure here. I have 113 here. Um, and then I have 63 here, and I worked back from there. Okay, so I've just given you a little overview um, of some of the questions in paper two. Um, another thing that I will say is that it's super, super, super useful, okay, for any biology or marine science exam is understanding variables. Definitely go over this. Um, so um, variables are like when you have an, an experiment, an investigation, variables will be uh, different factors, uh, usually different things that are changing or might be changing in an investigation. Um, so like here, you know, the year, uh, the, the mean length of the angler fish, those are variables. Um, the other thing, though, you would think about is like here, they're looking at how the length of anglerfish on sale at fish markets changed over 10 years. Um, that's what they're looking at. Um, and what you'd want to think about is like what variables they want to keep the same to make it more reliable and what things that they would change. Um, so for example, here suggests why the scientists randomly selected the fish on sale in each market and um, that's going to remove bias and you know make it more um of a accurate reliable result um you know you also might be looking at things when they talk about control variables or uh things that they are going to keep the same you know they might be looking at the location that they selected um when they were doing this and things like that. So yeah, you wanna know like the meaning of independent variables. Um, you wanna know uh, dependent variables, control variables and look at these. 
Um, sometimes it might ask you to calculate the change in mean length and little things like that. Um, they've also got suggest two reasons. Suggest is an interesting um, command word because, you know, it normally means there isn't just one correct concrete answer here. There's a few things you could say and you're kind of using common sense, your own knowledge of marine science and applying it to a situation you haven't learned about before. Um, so suggest two reasons for the change in mean length of anglerfish. So let's see what's happening. Oh, okay. So they are getting uh, smaller, getting smaller over time. Um, okay. So suggest, I mean, again, it's just suggestions. So, you know, there's lots of different things we could say. Um, it could be the impact of climate change, could be the impacts of um overfishing on food chains so there's less for them to eat uh so they're getting smaller um so yeah so th there's lots of different pressures that could be you know uh causing that so you can see that trend there you can see they're getting smaller and smaller um so yeah so, so suggest is that one way you're kind of like hmm what do i think just based off common sense and my knowledge and applying it to something i haven't actually learned about sure we haven't specifically seen about the mean length of anglerfish before, but you do know uh, some of the things that can cause fish to maybe not grow so well or not survive so well and stuff like that. Um, so you apply that when it's like a suggest question. Um, so, yeah, so that, that would be one of my top tips for you is to look at that command word. Um, and to also look at the marks and really not just look at the command word, but like take notice of what command word it is and how long you could, should spend on it and what sort of thing you are answering, right? Uh, just to show you the difference, here is a paper one. So this is all theory. Uh, you're not going to get that focus on practical stuff like we did in the last one um instead what you will say is uh you know the questions are on theory stuff only so like um you know it can be anything from like here state the word equation for aerobic respiration for two marks to a describe question describe three ways an animal cell differs from the plant cell here Again, it's theory. Um, state two features of sirenians. Um, so that's manatees and sea cows that identify them as mammals. Um, name two of these essential elements. So again, you've got state, name, a um, bunch of different things here. Um, got stuff about food webs, but as you can see, uh, yeah, it's all theory. All theory, sometimes data handling as well. And you can see that it's it's a real mix um, across all sorts of things, across syllabus from navigational aids that fishing boats use to the water cycle, to different fishing methods, to endangered species. It can be anything across the whole syllabus, okay? Um. So again, you can see um, taking a, a calculator, taking a scientific calculator, um, take in a pen for your written uh, questions and a pencil for diagrams or graphs. It's very useful. Okay, so the other thing that I just wanted to talk about in terms of your studying at the moment is uh, another top tip for this kind of last few last push before your exams especially if you're doing them in may um is um i would use the specification to help you with your revision now i'm just going to screen share the specification and talk you through what i am talking about uh, 
Okay. So um, if you go on to um, this part of the Cambridge website, um, which anyone can go on, and you go, you want to be looking on the 2024 to 2026 syllabus. Ignore anything but that one. This is the one. Click on it. I'll open up a doc. Okay. I know this this might seem overwhelming, but this is super, super useful for looking through um, all of the stuff you have to know. I think it's super useful for revision, this document. Okay. You can use this whether you're sitting the exams in 2024, 2025, or 2026. Okay. So this is the relevant one. Okay, so the first thing that I like to do is go through, there's just some information on paper one and paper two, nice and simple. They're both one hour, 45 minutes, and they're both worth exactly the same amounts. Um, so this is very useful, this part at looking at, you know, stuff that you're expected to do. I would especially look at the experimental skills and investigations um, as well. Don't forget that's important. Um, and then I would scroll down. And one of my favorite revision tips, especially when you're leading up to the exams, is to go through this part. So this is literally like what I used to help me create the course for you guys, okay? So what I would recommend doing is go through this and 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 basically go through it and tick off the subjects that you are confident in. You could print it out or you can just have it on, on the screen like this. It goes through, sure, it goes through in a more brief way, but it goes through everything you need to know, right? So... Can I describe the Earth as a planet orbiting the sun and the moon as a natural satellite orbiting the Earth? Yes, I can. Tick it off. Or you could uh, color code it with some highlighters and you could say green for super confident. Don't feel like I need to focus on it for revising. Amber, I kind of know it, but it needs work. Red, I don't remember this. I need to revise it ASAP. Another thing I love to do uh, when I am helping students revise um, and yeah, just go through it and literally think, can I do that? Do I know this? Um, do I need to go over this? I would take it one unit at a time. Okay, so it goes through, goes through. Again, it's useful when it's like this because you might go through these and say, right, do I know the words latitude, longitude, coordinates, equator? Can I describe the definitions of all these words? Okay. And um, again, key facts. It really condenses everything you need to know. Um, so you can, again, just tick it off. Okay. Other thing that I would recommend you look at is where it has these little bold bits that say PA. It means practical activity. Um, again, it, you know, nobody's testing that you have physically done this. But remember, these are the activities you are expected to know of and be able to describe them or spot them when they show a picture and describe the step-by-step. -step. I would make sure, particularly before you sit exam two, because that paper really focuses on these, is I would go through, highlight every time it says PA next to something and make sure you use a combination of my course um, some of these are video demos. Some of them I go over them in the recording lecture. Some of them I go over them in the slides. Um, go over those. Um, go over them in the textbook if you're using textbook. Um, and make sure that you know the step by step. Um, so, yes, yeah, so you want to know the method of that investigation and what is used for. So, the method just means the step by step. How do you carry it out? So, like you can see, there's one there, there's one here. And another one here, uh, pH of seawater, effect of pH and having calm dioxide. Again, those are in the uh, seawater unit, unit two. Same as this one, another one. Investigate the effect of temperature on the solubility of a solute in water. And here, again, if I was printing this out, I'd highlight these and make sure I've been through all of these, especially refreshed 
before paper two, uh, the second exam. These two, um, what you will find is uh, the seawater unit has quite a lot of these, um, but other units have a lot less. Um, okay, this one, for example, I showed you an example question that mentioned this. Uh, go down. Again, now onto animals and all the things we need to know. Again, I'd be ticking them off, seeing what I'm less confident in or more confident in. This is the main chunk of the unit three practical things you need to know as well. Um, so like here, sometimes you might get um, something to do with like magnification of like a fish, a fish gill or some cells. Um, and so here is the formula you need to know. Um, it's the image size divided by the actual size. Um, and obviously you'll be there, you'll have the paper in front of you um, and you'll be able to measure it. Um, using keys to identify marine animals, marine organisms. Again, then we don't really have any for a while. Then we have food tests, PA. So you need to know all the food tests. You need to know like the reagent, the chemical solution that's used and what color they turn. And for Benedict's test for reducing sugars, you need to know that you use, need to use a water bath to heat it as well. Go, that's the popcorn burning one. And then light intensity on the photosynthesis of a macroalga. I have a video on that that I go over on the lesson. Um, and then unit five, you've got this chunk, which is all about like serving animals, population counts, mostly quadrats. Um, and you need to talk about like transects and random sampling versus systematic sampling. Um, and then um, you don't actually have any other of those practical points. So for example, unit six, that content doesn't include any practical activities. Unit one doesn't either. Um, so yeah, so once you get here, it's all theory, all theory. Okay, um, but what I would say is that unit six is heavier on the content. Like there's a lot to learn in unit six, but it's all theory, but just make sure you, you spend plenty of time on this one. Um, because there's a lot of different topics. Um, so, yeah, so, so really use this specification. Definitely make use of it. Um, another excellent thing that's in here, let me find it, is the it goes over the command words and their meanings, right? So here we go, command words. Okay, use this. It's brilliant. Lots of people don't use this, um, but it, it's actually so helpful. So command word, what it means. So remember, I was talking about Commands words. Uh, it's just a fancy word for the first words that is uh, in like the question. It's telling you what to do. You might think that they just decide which one to use because they've maybe used define too many times this exam. But no, it's specifically to tell you how to answer that question. Like, you know, are you just setting out some main points or are you... Um, making a drawing or are you just saying something in very clear short terms or are you applying knowledge to a situation uh, to, to like put forward your own ideas um, so yeah these are useful look at these uh, get used to what they mean this is one that I find throws students off sometimes just in general not just marine science um, the reason why I say it sometimes throws people off is because it's where, like, you might see an example scenario, um, you know, in, in the exam paper, and you're like, I've never learned about this. I've never learned about the mean length of anglerfish over the years in a fishing village. But it doesn't actually expect you to have. Um, it might give you a scenario that you've never learned about, but you do have, like, the knowledge, the basic knowledge around those sorts of things to like apply some of your own ideas or suggestions towards it. Um, 
when you have something like outline, it's normally just met key points. Whereas, you know, discuss, that is in depth. That's more in depth. That's normally going to be more marks, you know, um, like six marks, for example. Um, evaluate is when, you know, you're kind of weighing up the pros and cons of something. Um, and thinking about different sides to it. Um, describe, um, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll use that a lot for like, say, describing a certain investigation, its method. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really, really useful. And the last thing that I will say, let me just find it, that I would recommend is, okay, here we go. All right. Again, this is your paper two. If you are uh, revising for that in particular um, and you're feeling a bit unsure about the practical uh, knowledge questions, have a look through this section, apparatus, materials and reagents. Um, again, I would use this as like you can kind of go over these and tick them off. These are it's a really extensive list. OK, it doesn't mean you're going to talk about all of these in your exam. It goes for all of the pieces of equipment that you might talk about um, in the syllabus. So like these, you know, Benedict solution, it's what we talk about when we test for glucose, for example, or uh, biorex when we talk about uh, testing for protein in food. Um, we talk about uh, indicator solution. Um, these are just like some of these are very basic, like you use an electronic balance or beakers. Um, but it's just giving you a nice idea of just basic pieces of equipment you might want to mention in some of your answers. For ecology, quadrats, transects, um, sacchi discs. So it kind of goes through things you might want to know. And also has a list of like the, the mathematical things that you might need for this as well. Okay, so if you're unsure on what you need to know, this will help. So yeah, super, super useful. Okay, now the last thing that I would recommend um, as you are revising is to really, really think about small manageable chunks okay definitely don't try and do seven hours a day and don't just stare at a page it, I, I know everyone works differently but I think there's very very few people from my experience um that that learn best from just staring at a textbook page and just reading it this is where you want to do active revision okay so active revision some things you might do. Um, look at one section, page or slide, five mins, cover it up with a piece of paper or something, then free write or free talk or record yourself five mins and see how much you can write down a remember. That is going to work so much better than just reading it and thinking you know it, but nothing's going in. Right. Little tricks like this. Another thing, try teach someone who knows less. Than you. OK, rope in uh, a parent or a sister or a brother or a friend and be like, hey, I am going to try to explain to you what eutrophication is. And they're going to be like, what are you talking about? And you've got to try explain it to them. That is so effective because if you this is something that has helped me so much. I am so much better at biology, at marine science than I ever have been, even when I was a student myself, because I teach people it every day. And you learn more than you'd ever know, and it sticks in your head. You memorize so much better when you become an expert in explaining it to people who don't understand it yet. Because you've got to really think outside the box. You've got to break it down. You've got to go over it over and over again. So yeah, try that. If there's a topic you're really struggling with, try find someone who doesn't study the topic and try teach it to them until they are kind of understanding. Okay. Um, other things that you can do, um, again, I know these are more 
you know, common ones, but like flashcards. The thing about flashcards, I know people find these a bit boring. Um, what I would say is actually do test yourself with them. Don't just look at them. Get someone to test you with them or test yourself properly with them. And very short bursts. So like, let's do five minutes of flashcards on a particular marine science topic or unit for five minutes every day. That is so much better than once a week for three hours. Also, start revising now. Start revising as early as you can, but revise um, in short bursts. Um, the other thing that you can... Um, definitely make use of is um like definitely looking at exam papers looking at the specification and revise smart and focus what i mean by this is don't avoid a topic because you don't like it because it's the one you find hard or you the one you find boring i know that's really easy to do i actually totally get it um I actually find quite often people revise the thing they're already really good at and don't need to revise because it's nice to revise something easy, right? Because we're like, yeah, I'm so smart. I know this. And it's really satisfying. Um, you are smart, by the way. You're all smart and brilliant. Um, but don't keep revising a topic just because you like it. If you are aiming for, for you know, uh, whatever grade you want, whether that is a four or a nine, whatever you are aiming for. Um, uh, definitely think about like, what is the topic I hate, right? That's what I want you to do. I want you to go, what is the topic or the question that if it comes up, I'm going to be like, no, I don't want to do this. That is what you need to revise, okay? That is uh, what you need to do, okay? <laughs> don't avoid it because that won't make you feel confident. Really think, and this is where I go through the spec, okay? And I would go, oh, okay. I, let's say I'm like, right, I love the animal kingdom unit. Love that, expert in that. Is it fun to revise? Yeah, because I'm great at it. And, you know, we all love to be great at something. Uh, and it's easy, so. But I might be like, oh, God. I really, really hope that, some of the mm, questions on the chemistry of seawater don't come up because it's boring or I don't like it or I find it really hard to remember, that's what you need to revise. And revise it until you do know it, you're confident, and then move on to your next most hated topic. <laughs> Topics are great, all of them are useful, but I, I get that, you know, there's certain ones some of us might like and not like. Okay. So... Those really are my my final tips for you, okay? I can't stress enough some of those techniques for revision. Some of my favorite ones personally are the, um, like looking at a section of notes, then covering it up and then writing as much as I can possibly remember, like a little game with myself. I really like that one because sometimes I used to get embarrassed if I was like getting a friend to test me. Because I'm like, oh, you know, I don't want them to see me get it wrong, which, you know, is silly. I'm, I am a bit silly, but there you go. Um, we should never be embarrassed from mistakes or anything like that. We are all trying and that's the most important thing. Um, but it's a great way to do it on your own. Great way to do it on your own. Don't just stare at a page of notes. It's not, it's not going to work. Um, and yeah just short bursts every day revise more than you think you need to revise okay look at real exam style questions go through the things that you are least confident on first and then work your way back through. I think it's been useful hope you all uh have a, a a good time revising hope it all goes well and good good look for your exams if you are sitting them soon